Hello guys, my name is Dreytax and welcome to the first series of kernel driver development. And today just we're just going to take a quick look about what I've learned in the last couple of weeks about drivers and basically show you how can you make your very own first driver using Visual Studio and what you will need to be aware about when you're creating your own first driver. You're going to need Visual Studio and in case you already have it, uh, just download it again and click on the modify option here and go to the C++ section and be sure to have the Spectrum mitigated libraries installed. You will not be able to compile a driver without them. The second thing that you're going to need is obviously the Windows driver kit, the WDK. And on this page you'll scroll down and find step 2 and download the VDK for Windows 10. This is going to install some libraries and uh, integrate it itself to Visual Studio. The third thing that you're going to need is debug view. What we are going to use this program for is to see or uh, take a look at our debug messages that we're going to print out. This program must be launched as an administrator or you will not be able to intercept kernel calls uh, when you are trying to look for your messages that you're printing. The fourth option is kind of optional but very recommended. Uh, you will need a virtual machine. You can use VMware or VirtualBox. The reason behind this is because the kernel drivers are programs that are written against the uh, Windows Native API but not the Win32 subsystem API and they well basically the driver that you make executes in kernel mode. What this means is that if you do a mistake like not checking if a value is null for example you would get a null reference exception on C sharp for example or in Java or in C++ your, your program most likely crashes unless your exception is handled. Now the same thing is kind of up on uh, drivers. The only difference is when you run into an error, you, your driver will not just fail, your whole operating system goes down and you will get a BSOD, a blue screen of death. And you probably not, well, you don't want to do that while testing your uh, driver. And this is because drivers basically must be perfect uh, when you develop them. Well, we were not going to use VMware in this first tutorial. Uh, because it's not necessary. We're not going to do anything intense, just setting up your first driver. So go to uh, Visual Studio and surf, search for kernel and click on the kernel mode driver empty. Uh, click on next and we're going to name this guided hacking and also be sure not to use non-ASCII characters like non-English characters in your path because when you compile your driver um, Basically, it will replace the special characters to normal ASCII characters. And if the directory does not exist, then your driver will not appear uh, on the uh, path you specified. And click on the Create button. Just let Visual Studio load up. We can switch our solution configuration to release. When you're compiling a driver, you will also need to uh, run the exact specific version that you have compiled, like if you have a 64-bit operating system, then you have to run a 64-bit driver. If you have a 32-bit, then you have to run a 32-bit uh, driver. And before doing anything small, basic coding related, right-click on the project and go to properties and click on inf 2 cat And be sure to you to have the use local time option set to yes. Uh, which is well, use local time and click on the apply button. Inf2cat is basically a command line tool that decides whether the driver package in file which is located at the driver file can be digitally signed for a specific uh, Windows version. This basically is a bug that happens when you want to compile uh, your driver. Sometimes uh, when you compile your driver a bunch of times, the in files date is set to a future date. And in that case, uh, when you try to uh, sign your driver upon compilation, it's, it will not compile and it will fail because uh, the dates are obviously not matching and uh, it will cause an error. So be sure to use local time. And we're going to go to the linker and command line and type into the additional options integrity check and click apply. What this does basically is that it tells the 
signature of the binary image of the driver uh, must be checked at load time. I do not remember the error that I had, but in order to fix that, you will have to use this option. So you will have to do this uh, every time you set your driver up, just be sure to use this. And this is the in file. We're gonna take a look at this a bit later time. Right click on your project, add, class but we're gonna name this you can name this anything you want you're gonna name this guided hacking and we're not developing in C++ but in C so remove the extension and click OK and we can remove the class and we will have our first method called NT status it's a function and we'll name this driver entry and we'll take a P driver uh, object let's go and include the uh, header first include and tiffs header so it will take a p driver object and we'll need this simply p driver object and it also takes a another parameter called p unicode uh, string and this is the registry path now this driver entry is something like public static void main in C sharp for example this is where your program or driver starts up and we do not have a unload uh, function specified by default so we're just going to create ours so we're going to type empty status unload driver p driver object p driver object again and we're going to go back to the source file and declare these functions driver entry and NT status unload driver well basically we have to declare our unload uh, function we can do that at P driver object driver unload and we're gonna tell uh, this variable that our unload function is unload driver let's try to compile our driver by using rebuild and see what happens so we basically have two issues here um, as you can see down here one of them is that p registry path is unreferenced former parameter and the same goes for p driver object well for this one this kind of doesn't make any sense to you right well the reason behind this is uh, when I, as I stated before when you develop a kernel driver you have to make things look perfect so every warning that you make is going to count as an error so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to disable uh, annoying warnings that can be considered ignorable and you can do this by typing pragma warning disable and we're gonna type in the code 4100 and there's another issue here but we're going to go ahead and compile our driver and this is the second issue uh, this more well it makes better sense now right that I tried to compile my driver it's a function this is a function to where's the return type and it says that unload driver and driver entry must return a value and then so let's fix this is this issue we're gonna go ahead and type return status success and this will basically fix our uh, issue here let's try to compile it for now and it's gone completely gone we have created our first empty driver so this is kind of optional but you can print out messages uh, whenever you want using the uh, debug print or debug print X uh, but I'm most like well, I recommend using debug print X uh, all the time and in case well when you use debug print x you will have to specify extra parameters like component id and level and a the format is going to be your message so instead of doing this what i usually do is add a new header file new item and let's name this messages.header and fragment once um, and we're going to define this ooh, typo so we're going to define a function called debug message and it's going to take take a string and some extra parameters and we're going to call debug print x 
and we're going to specify uh, 0, 0, the message, and we're going to pass on the extra arguments that we can uh, use when you want to replace something in a message, for example. We're gonna, uh, I'm going to demonstrate that in a next video. And once we include <coughs> messages.header, we can use this function now. So debug message. Welcome to the first guided hacking driver. And when the driver is unloading, debug message Papa Rake says goodbye. And let's re let's rebuild our driver. It's successfully built. And now we're going to take a look at how to start your driver up. So let's go to the uh, project and we're on 64-bit release. And this is your driver output. And we're going to copy the path of this driver um, and go to the command line. And you're going to type sc create guided hacking type kernel bin path and paste the exact path where the driver is located. So in this case, it's guided hacking.sys. And press enter. If you want to load a an unsigned driver that hasn't been signed on a, uh, officially, which you will have to pay money for if you want to do that, we're going to discuss that again in a later video. You're going to have to type bcd edit set test signing on and press enter and the operation completed successfully and you would have to reboot your machine now but i'm already uh in testing mode the signing mode so on the uh, bottom right you would see windows 10 test signing mode uh, and that's how you you can confirm that you are in test signing mode already and I think this is all you need to know. Uh, yeah, one more note. Um, sometimes when you want to set uh, the test signing mode on, you will have to disable the uh, secure boot in your BIOS. So uh, attempt to do this, and if it pops out uh, an error message, it's probably because you're, in, you're using secure boot, and you can disable that in your BIOS. And let's start our driver up. As I've stated, you must start this debug view program in, as an as administrator, and click on the capture, and capture kernel must be tagged, and type sc start guided hacking. And see, th this is the moment where we can see our message uh, that I've typed here the first time. And we can also see, welcome to the first guided hacking driver. And you can also stop this driving by typing guided hacking, uh, sorry, SC stop, guided hacking. And then it unloads, it says Papa Rake says goodbye, like here. So I hope this video uh, at first hand was helpful to create your very own first kernel driver. I'm going to do a bunch of more examples and show you some uh, APIs that you can use uh, for breaking games and uh, for uh, doing some cool stuff. So I suppose I see you guys in, you know, in the next video. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Again, guidedhacking.com slash donate, patreon.com slash guidedhacking. Please support us so that we can continue to make videos and peace out.